Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. We are drawing some trees today, or tree patterns. So that's what's going to be happening. Going to be working something like this sort of pattern. Uh, lots of lines, but uh, it's relatively easy, and I'm kind of showing you all how to do that. Uh -huh. So I'm actually cover this entire page with a tree pattern. Um, and the best way to do that I've found uh, is splitting it into three different sections, uh, especially if we want to shade it a little bit. So I'm going to use a ruler or straight edge and just kind of loosely do that with pencil. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact thirds. Yeah, because this is for shading. And so I think I'm going to have the sunlight kind of hitting the tree from this side. So this side will be lighter or the lightest. This side will be a little bit light and this will be the darker shaded side here. And obviously it doesn't have to be perfect thirds because um, depending on where the sun would be for this hypothetical tree, uh, the shading could look like anything, honestly. Alrighty, so got three sections there. Now the first step for starting tree patterns is creating a few knots. Um, so actually, I wonder if I can put something in chat. Knots, there we go, it's official and documented. All right, so um, I'm just gonna be using a normal uh, black pen. Um, not anything incredibly fine points. Um, I'm actually gonna use two of them, sorry. Uh, and one of these is more fine points than the other. So this one's a little bit smaller than this one is. Um, so I'll actually use the larger one, the darkest one, just for the shaded area over here. Um, and then I'll use this finer point one for the two lighter sections. So, again, step one is making the knots. So that is just making some random ovals in random places. Um, so I'll make one there, uh, maybe one here. Actually, if I have that, it's gonna end up looking like a face, which isn't the worst, but I don't think I wanna make a face on my tree. <laughs> so, I'm gonna move that one actually down over here. Yeah, small one here, smaller one up here. And then, oh, there maybe. Last one there. All right, got a couple knots to work around. All right, and that's um, mostly what we're gonna use the pencil for actually. So we're gonna switch to the pen now and the next part here is going to be tracing a couple kind of, um, not squiggly lines, but they do kind of wanna flow, um, almost kind of like a wave or a snake or something across the paper uh, as wood grain kind of wood. Um, and so the, uh, the only lines that I'm actually gonna have connecting from the very top to the bottom are these two lines here um, separating the sections. So I'm just gonna use the pencil line as a pretty, um, a pretty rough guide essentially for where this one was going. And the other guide is using the pencil lines of the knots to make sure you're going around because how a, a knot kind of works in wood is it's almost like a little isolated part where there's a, a branch that was growing there or, or something or the wood's just getting you know, knotted up. So a lot of the other wood kind of flows around it, um, kind of like a river does around a rock almost. Um, so that's the only really two rules um, of making this. Uh, so I'll just... Go down this way. I go all the way from the top to the bottom. And I'll do the same with this one, but this one is going to intersect with this knot right here. So that one's going to have to kind of move around it, and I'll show you what that looks like. 
So I'm going to do the same thing here. But this is going to go around the knot and then kind of loop back like that. All right. So now let's use the pens to create the actual knots. And these, the easiest way I've found to start them is just to make a spiral, essentially. And it doesn't have to be exactly on the pencil. And you can kind of choose when you want to stop or how, how tightly you want to make this spiral. Um, but usually I make them really, uh, really, really loose just to start with. So I'll uh, put the rest of these in. Another fun way to do this is you can actually kind of have uh, almost like a almost like a yin yang sort of symbol where there's like two things intersected um, to make a knot. So one way to do that is uh, you go down, let's make a hook shape, and then just make the opposite of that and kind of loop those together like that. So that's another way to kind of uh, fill in. And then for these ones over here, again, I'm going to be using the uh, the larger one. All right, so we've got our wood knots. And again, this will eventually look somewhat like this pattern that I um, created uh, two days ago, I think. Um, it just takes a little while to get there. So that's the one thing with uh, art. Sometimes doing patterns takes a bit of patience. Um, but such is the case with ourselves, too. So let's go ahead and get the pencil out of here. My apologies if this shakes the table too much and wobbles the camera, but I cannot control how physics works. All right. This eraser I use is honestly, um, it's kind of like putty almost. Um, it's just a formable chunk of rubber. Makes it pretty nice and very, very easy to be um, precise with erasing, erasing if you need to, because then you can just kind of create a little eraser tip. Um, it works out all right. All right, cool. So now the pencil is off there mostly in this little spot right there. Um, now we get to do the fun slash boring part of filling the rest of this in with lines. Um, and then we'll get to the shading after that. Um, and the shading also kind of involves the coloring part as well. Uh, so this isn't just going to be a black and white tree. I'll, um, I'll add a couple of shades of brown, um, or if you want to make your, your tree pink or green or, um, maroon or whatever, uh, you're free to do that, obviously, or you can make it a rainbow tree or whatever. I'm going to make mine brown though. Um, it's a little easier to explain kind of how shading works uh, with a tree that's a normal color. So let's start filling in the rest of the lines here. And the best way to do this, I've found, is to just kind of do a back and forth sort of pattern where you um, maybe start from the top and go down and find another area to start from the bottom and go up and then back and forth. Um, now, again, like I said, these are the only two lines that are actually going to be going all the way from the top to the bottom. So none of the other lines that we're going to be doing are going to uh, trace the entire length of the page here. So what that looks like is if I just choose a random place up here and start down, I work around, not there, kind of flow down, squiggling. It doesn't have to match the other squiggles necessarily. Um, then I'll just stop right there. And then choose a place, a random place on the bottom here. I'll kind of go up this way a ways and stop there. I'll choose a spot on the top. This one's going to be pretty short. This one will kind of work around. This one will go almost to the top there. Let's choose a spot on the top of this guy. Stop there. Go from the bottom of this one. Now, one thing you never really want to do is have lines crossing each other. 
um, because wood doesn't uh, uh, doesn't typically grow in like weaving patterns necessarily. Um, it's more kind of like ripples that kind of work it, uh, work their ways uh, down or up, you know, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, so that's one thing. However, there are some times where the, you know, the flow obviously splits. So um, occasionally I'll add in um, an angle or a, a place where there's a break and the line kind of splits apart. Or um, as an example, drawing up like this, weaving around the wood knot and then stopping and then going back down and kind of matching some of those and then stopping before I get all the way back down to the bottom. So now there's a little, uh, a little break right here where the wood or the bark or whatever it is, uh, is kind of growing apart. Um, and you can do that in big scale or small scale. Like I could put one over here at the top that doesn't even really go down to where this wood knot is and anchor it back up there. Do a couple over on this side with the uh, with the darker pen. There's one on there. Do this one working around that wood knot, and then around this wood knot, stopping up there. This one down this way, and then actually make a break. Go back up a little ways. This one, I'm actually going to go in between those two, just making sure not to cross any. Work around the wood knot there, go all the way down, almost to the bottom. There's another good space here on the bottom. So now what I'm trying to do is actually look along the, the top of the paper here, or the bottom of the paper here, and see if there's any places where I feel like there's... Uh, there's too much space in between lines and then just, you know, starting another one. So it looks like there's a little bit of space here. Uh, so start another grain going up this way. Um, looks like there's a little space right up here. Um, stop there. I feel like I can also it decently going down this way. All right. So I think I'm going to be done with that side of the dark ones for now, at least from the ones starting from the tops and the bottoms. Let's look for a couple places here. This guy looks like it could use one line there. A little bit of space in between the top lines here. So I'll add a pretty short one coming down there. And a longer one here. One thing to keep in mind as well with uh, wood patterns is they, um, you know, it's not like a, uh, a exact graph necessarily with these lines. So they're not all going to be moving and flowing at the same exact, uh, same exact way. So if you're, tracing along a line and you keep matching the same exact pattern, it's going to almost end up looking like you're, um, uh, I don't know, making a tree that's part river or something. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, don't feel, don't feel restricted uh, too much. You can kind of be a little bit free with how you draw these lines back and forth. Um, just make sure they don't intersect is the only thing. It looks like there's space up here. So then I'm gonna go close to that line and squiggle over to move up this way, then actually make a break back down towards itself. There we go. And then I think one line going this way. Stop here. One last one that way. All right. So now I think that's going to be mostly it for the lines that are uh, starting or stopping on the tops and bottoms of the page here. So now what we add after this is the rest of the lines in between uh, that are maybe. 
Um, what are you saying, Google? Uh, yeah, sorry. Well, uh, I got distracted by my Google Home. Stop playing music. Um, we will uh, essentially create the lines that are now the smaller lines and shorter lines that don't intersect with the tops and bottoms of the pages. So to do that, um, I'm actually going to first focus on the lines around the wood knots. I just kind of make those a little bit more complete. So this guy right here, I'm just going to add one line like that around its border and maybe another one in here, just making sure not to intersect any. It's down that way. And this one. Squiggle it like this, that. Switching over to the other pin. And most of these lines are. Um, Going to be relatively random. Um, so to make sure that it doesn't get too crowded, um, you kind of just have to let your eyes look for places where there's more white space than, than there are lines. Um, and so that's, uh, I guess the easiest way to do that is to, you know, kind of actually lean back a little bit from the page and uh, literally just uh, disconnect your eyes a little bit. Maybe, uh, I don't know, go slightly cross-eyed and um, that's sometimes what I do to uh, spot places that are missing some shading or uh, could use some more lines. So now I'm gonna speed this process up a bit and just add a lot of random lines in those kind of blank spaces that my eyes are catching. And some of these are going to be shorter than others. Some of these might, uh, you know, might traverse most of the length of the, length of the page. Uh, but now, essentially what I'm doing is not really, um, not really uh, letting most of these get to, to the end of, ends of the page. And one there. Okay, I haven't done too many of those. Uh, breaks as much, so I think I'll add a couple small ones here and there. Extend that one. All right, this song is kind of sad, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that as well, but Casper has some sad songs. That's okay, but currently I'm not wanting to feel sad. <laughs> Been a little bit of a weird week, not gonna lie. All right, let's see. For a few more places, I feel like this could use something here, maybe there as well. This side over here is lacking a little bit. I had a couple more lines inside some of these um, wood knot areas. It gives them a little bit more, a little bit more detail as well. I 
Now, if you're trying to draw along with this as well, it's really up to you when you want to stop and um, how much uh, how much detail you want to add in to this wood patterning with all these uh, all these small lines. First couple times I uh, kind of tried doing this and essentially taught myself how to how to draw this wood patterning. Um, I was using just a normal uh, normal like black I don't know, ballpoint pen. It was a big pen essentially. Um, and the more detail I added, uh, the more I was able to to shade it because uh, I wasn't using any color. Um, and so uh, the first time I did this, I actually spent, a, I don't know, a couple hours on just a tiny little tree and it ended, ended up looking pretty cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, feel free to just uh, kind of experiment around. One thing I've also liked to do with this is um, look at different types of wood or different types of bark. Um, and see how those differ from one another. Let's see. And that kind of sometimes inspires me to, you know, add a little bit of actual real life uh, application from uh, a real wood pattern rather than just a random squiggly one that I'm making from my mind. All right, I think I'm just about done with the lines, actually. Just let my eyes look for a couple more blank spots, maybe. Actually, this right here, I kind of want to connect those two lines into one of these for some reason. I think I'll uh, add a little bit more detail here. All right, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it there, sweet. So we got our lines now, and uh, this side over here is looking a little bit darker, uh, just because it has the, uh, you know, the darker lines or the wider, the wider lines there. Um, so now comes the shading part. Um, and this is uh, very tedious as well, it can be at least, but um, I really, really love when uh, all this sort of comes together. So what I'm gonna do now is pick out a couple Brown here. So I use that one. This guy here. Yeah. That looks fine. All right, sweet. So again, we're kind of remembering those uh, those thirds. Um and actually we have the uh, the guiding lines, like there's this one line here that goes all the way down to the bottom there. Um, and there's the one right next to right next to this knot here that kind of separate those two. So for this area over here, I'm going to use this lighter brown. And essentially what I'm going to do is trace along the same black lines, but I'm going to do it on the uh, it's what's going to be my right side um, or essentially where the uh, where I want the sunlight to be coming from. So I'll have the the black line on the left and then the brown on the right. Now, thankfully this, um, that's a different kind of brown than I thought that was gonna be, but you know, we'll, we'll go with it. We'll see how it turns out. Now, it doesn't have to be super, super precise. Um, because there's a lot of these lines, obviously. Last part is we, uh, 
I've kind of already done most of the difficult work though. Getting the initial lines in here. So now essentially what we're doing is tracing more or less. Let me try and follow the uh, spiral as best I can. For some reason, my uh, my playlist is picking a lot of really sad songs. This playlist is like some some sad songs, mostly happy though. So Spotify must be having a bad day. That's okay though. Now, depending on how much time we have at the hour, um, I might go back over these same lines, except using the other side of this pen that's a bit, um, a bit wider. And that would add kind of a little bit of extra shading to it, because um, then you have the line that's closest to the black line. Um, but essentially we have been drawn over twice with the same color, but once with a fine pen and once with a not fine pen. One thing that I'm frequently reminded of when working on patterns in art, which is one of my favorite things to work on. Um, and I mention this most weeks, but if we look at our own selves or our own lives, you know, um, as something that has the potential to be a work of art. Well, sometimes we do need to do the filler work and um, that is very, very tedious. Sometimes, you know, of constant patterns, or if we need to you know, break a habit or form a new habit, or um, you know, maybe uh, maybe talk with someone on a regular basis, or uh, whatever that may look like for each and every one of us as individuals. Um, you know, there are patterns that uh, are healthier for us sometimes, and but those do take intentionality to just. Uh, put lots and lots and lots of work in, um, and eventually uh, we have, uh, you know, we'll have the end goal, but uh, we need to have the end goal in mind when working on that pattern, uh, or else we get lost in the minutia of, you know, like, oh, well, this one line doesn't match up perfectly with that line, and, um, you know, I had to draw over this part twice to make it even look decently good, but, um, you know, once we get the whole pattern finished, uh, those really won't make as much of a difference because those are minuscule instances um, you know that make up the whole of the work of the work of art whatever that may look like for your life so um I'm kind of bring that back now uh to this uh this actual uh, piece of doodling art um we finished this section here so now uh do the darker one on this side and actually the easiest way for me to do that because uh, what i want to do is actually um have this dark brown be on the left side um, so it'll essentially be going brown within the black lines here and then coming in this way, it'll be a darker brown with the black lines on the inside. So the easiest way to do that is to actually flip this around the opposite direction and 
So now um, the dark brown will be on my right side still. And the reason that's easiest is because I am right-handed. Um, and that is uh, kind of the easiest way for me to keep this on the right, obviously. So whatever method works for you, um, you know, doing it fully sideways, diagonal, changing it every single time, um, whatever works, honestly, is what can work. All right. So, do my best to keep this on the right side of the black lines that I've already drawn. This, I'm gonna, let's see. I think I'll first trace on the right side of this one line that traverses the whole width or the whole length of the page. Um, Cause that can kind of help me to section off these areas. Actually what I'm realizing now is that there was several of these lines that should have been uh, should have been done with the wider pen, so I'm actually going to correct that real quick. These are on the other side of uh, this separating line here. All right. Um, sky. Okay. All right. I'll continue on with darkening this side of the tree. Now it'll be a little trickier when we get to the middle section, but it's really only tricky if you, uh, if you don't want to use your imagination. Because if, uh, if you imagine how the light would hit a tree, you know, one side might be dark and one side might be light, but what does the middle look like? Especially when there's things like knots, you know, that are, um, that are not completely flat. So the middle section is actually gonna be a little bit of a combination of this dark brown and the lighter brown. Oh yeah, one thing I did actually want to address as well is uh, if any of you were here last week, I wanted to uh, thank you for one, for being here, um, but then also kind of, um, I feel like confess is a pretty strong word, but uh, kind of confess a little bit that I actually didn't really enjoy the, the drawing I did last week. Um, I kind of got myself into a little bit of a, a pickle starting it and then not sure, not being sure how to finish it really, but uh, obviously wanting to finish it because I was, um, you know, I was live on YouTube. So um, I appreciate you guys sticking with me through that. Um, but I think the reason I didn't enjoy it as much is because um, I think I was trying too hard to learn through the process instead of um, uh, using what I already have learned uh, to teach you guys, um, which is, Part of uh, part of what I wanted to do, uh, you know, because um, it's much much easier to connect with people, especially when it's kind of one sided. Where I'm streaming, and it's not as much of a conversation like a Zoom call would be. Um, you know, we're not uh, we're not learning things together necessarily. Um, so I appreciate y'all uh, y'all watching that and the uh, and seeing the process that I was trying to go through. You know of um, taking a, uh, a scripture or a concept and um, you know, trying to trying to turn that into a visual. It's a pretty hard thing to do for me um, just because I work better a little bit with the, the details and the small, um, uh, sm yeah, small details and small patterns and things like that. Um, but 
All that to say, I did have a good learning experience through it. Hopefully, some of that passed on to you guys as well. All right, we are nearing the end of this section and this part of the pattern, at least. There we are, we've done it, sweet. I'm gonna turn this back normal. All right, it's uh, starting to come together a little bit here, um, but obviously there's a bit more work to do. So in the middle, like I was talking about, if you imagine, light coming in from this one side, it's going to be obviously illuminating this side the most, and this side the least. But when it hits places in the middle here that are um, you know, knots that are maybe a con, uh, a concave rather than convex, meaning they're you know, kind of going into the tree rather than bulging out, um, then the light is gonna be uh, you know, catching, it, catching it kind of like a bowl almost. And so, I'll trace this with a pencil as best I can, but um, if this right here is the whole area of the knot, and this one is kind of up here in this area, um, if the light is coming in this way, um, then this will be the light side of the tree, but then if this is a bowl right here, the light would actually also be, um, well, it would, the light would also be hitting this opposite side here. Um, so I'll actually split this in half, as well as this guy here. And what that means is the opposite side, so this side here, of the inside of the bowl, um, would be a bit darker. So what I'm going to do is shade the, uh, essentially the opposite side from this dark side. I'm gonna shade that darker in the same manner um, as this one over here. So I'll use the dark brown here and do it on the same side of the black as this. So I'll do it like that. And I'm gonna keep this mostly within the bounds of the pencil that I've kind of traced here. That's the easiest way to kind of give yourself parameters or something is to just trace it with pencil and then erase it later. All right, I'll do the same thing for this guy up here. This inside would be Darker. Darker there. And there. All righty. And now, essentially to give this uh, shaded area over here a little bit of a fade effect into this, or I guess to give the light fade effect into the shadow, um, I'll actually choose a couple random lines on this side um, or in the middle section here uh, to add the shadow to. So I'll do that one right there, this one here, this one down here. Small one, and maybe just a section of this one, section of this one here. One part of this one here. And part of that one there. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe also this one here. There we go. Great, and now we're gonna switch back to 
the light brown. And then do the same thing we were doing here. So keeping it on the right side. And then when it gets down to a line that already has dark brown on it, we'll just stop like something on the opposite side. Um, that way there aren't there aren't going to be any lines that have uh, light brown on one side and dark brown on the other. All right. And then on this half of the the wood knot, it's gonna be catching on this inside of the bowl here. One of my favorite parts of doing patterns and things, especially across an entire page like this, is when you start getting to a place where uh, maybe you're not even close to being done yet, but um, you've got the whole page at least somewhat filled with something. You get, start to get a little bit of a glimpse of what it is that you've kind of had in mind this whole time, and it's now becoming real. It's a fun place to be. In this area, light brown and dark brown, uh, they're going to start to mix a little bit back and forth. Almost gives it like a ice, ice cream swirl kind of vibe. All right, let me get the pencil out of here. That's looking pretty messy because it is, but that's why it's pencil. It can be gone. Yeah, we've still got about, uh, about 15 minutes, so I'm going to work on the middle section a little bit here, um, a little bit more. And I'm actually going to do what I was thinking of doing originally with this side, but um, then I realized if I added more color to the, the light side of the tree, that would make it darker, obviously, um, because it would be drawn over more of the, the white. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is for the two knots that are on this side, um, on what would be the darker side of them or the, the right side, uh, I'll add and a wide line on the right half of it. So that can be a little bit more shaded, but now I'm going to real quick go over the same lines, the light ones here, uh, but as lightly as I can with the uh, with the wide side of the pen. Now this one, you got to be really okay with just being super, super freeform. The bigger the marker gets, the messier it's going to get. The more ink it's going to put out. 
So when I'm using a larger side of the marker, I guess I'll actually um, oftentimes elevate my elbow a little bit more so that my whole arm can kind of float across the page instead of having it planted and doing more of the movement with my wrist. Um, Cause that way you can kind of just get these bigger strokes in there that don't need to be as precise as with uh, the fine points. So I don't know if that's a pro tip, but that is a me tip. <laughs> but when you're using a larger pen, pick your elbow up. You can kind of get a little bit more free form with it. Unless of course you're trying to be precise. In which case you might have to get like super, super close and like hit your hand and then <laughs> do that whole, do that whole spiel. All right. Almost finished with this. All right, and that is our breaking line right there. For this third of the tree. All right, I don't think I missed any spots. Great. Now, you might have guessed it, but we're going to do the same thing with the dark pen. But not in the middle section here, I don't think. Um, I'll leave these darker. Um, actually, you know what I think I'll do? I think I'll go over these dark lines with the lighter pen. That'll maybe give it a better blending effect. But for now, on, uh, on this side, we're going to use the the larger side of the dark brown pen, and mm -hmm. yeah, there's the line there. And again, just kind of go over it as freely as possible. It gives the ink a little bit more of a messy look too, if it's um, if the pen is being dragged along without uh, a lot of pressure being put down. And that can oftentimes give you kind of a cool effect that maybe you weren't even necessarily trying to go for. Um, and it adds a little bit of extra unintentional detail to you know, bark or really anything that you're trying to draw. One type of bark I want to spend a bit more time trying to figure out how to draw is birch bark. There's so one thing that you all may not really know about birch bark is that it uh, takes a very, very, very long time to rot, um, which means it's very, um, well, it's annoying if you have um, if you have a bunch of firewood that you're keeping and then a uh, you accidentally let it rot and you just left with a bunch of bark and it happens to my dad one time when I was a kid but um that makes it the it makes it very um uh, durable and sustainable so my bracelet is actually made of uh, a piece of birch bark that I found shoot I think uh five or six years ago um and it hasn't really broken down I mean I've, I've swam with it in lakes and uh, worn it all around but um, I really like how birch bark looks, especially when it's, um, you know, living and on a tree. And uh, it's got a really cool, uh, almost like three-tone, typically, uh, like three-tone thing going on where it's 
the white of the bark, and then there's like a light gray, and then there's kind of a almost like a pastel brown, if you will. Um, and the gray and the brown are kind of splotched around on the white in a, a pretty specific way or pattern. Um, and I haven't quite figured out how to draw it, but I really like the way it looks. Maybe I'll have to try using watercolors, though. I do like using watercolors, so maybe uh, I'll just talk to some of you guys in, uh, in person. Uh, come hang out and um, draw with you guys, but then see if uh, you know, doing watercolors is something you guys are interested in. Uh, cause actually, um, now that I think about it, just to jump backwards real quickly, um, I like doing some things that are very simple, like um, I guess, for instance, I'm not sure well you all can see that, but it's... Uh, as basically, this whole thing is purple, and then I add some blue, and then add some yellow, and it kind of looks like the sun behind some uh, behind some clouds. Um, but more specific things I like painting are using um, using pens and watercolors uh, to do things uh, kind of like hello this. Um, so painting things and then drawing over it. Um, so that's what I enjoy doing the most with with uh, watercolors, but. Back to the tree here. Getting to a place where we're uh, just about uh, just about finished with the pattern here, but I want there to be, I think, a little bit more blending of the dark and the light sides. Um, so now what I'm going to do uh, is actually keep it this way. And um, uh, earlier I said I don't think I want there to be uh, both dark brown and light brown on the on the opposite sides of the uh, the black line, I think that would look fine now that we have the the larger light brown lines in here. Uh, to use the fine point of the dark brown pen on the opposite side of those. Um, so I think I'll just really uh, really quickly trace some of those, but not all of them. I'll give it a little bit more of a uh, randomly shaded and splotched look. So obviously sunlight is the erratic, um, but also we can't control uh, the you know, the waves of how this uh, how lighting would hit bark necessarily. It's not going to be fully continuous. All right, should be good there. And I think the last thing we'll maybe do is the lines in the middle section here that only have the dark brown on uh, on one side. I'll now just add a, uh, a fine tip line on the opposite side here. Again, to just add a little bit more blending of the lights. Okay, a little here. Up there. And add a few touches of light brown over in this area. All right, I think that will be 
about it. Um, we're kind of drawing wood patterns. Um, so again, you can be pretty uh, pretty freeform with this. Um, but if you want to, you know, spend a full several hours on that one small little piece that uh, you do super super precisely, and you make sure that every single line is, um, I don't know, a certain amount of a width away from the other one, and um, they're all really precisely colored, then you know, it can obviously turn out looking really really cool. However, um, you don't need to do that if you don't want to. And uh, wood patterns are one of the ones that I like to just kind of get lost in in doing and not having to be super specific with. Um, not sure entirely what we'll be doing next week. Um, I'm thinking it'll be involving um, more how to use colors together rather than uh, creating uh, creating patterns with uh, black pens. Uh, so actually creating patterns with multiple colors involved. Um, so maybe maybe something a little bit mosaic related, potentially. We'll see. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to be here, then that is phenomenal. Uh, thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Thursday and a uh, good rest of your week as well. We'll see you.